coming to you live on tape from the beautiful Campbell Bell Building on the Square in Fayetteville, Arkansas. It's time for Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Adam Robison, and you have landed on another episode of Northwest Arkansas Business Radio, the place where the excellent people of Northwest Arkansas come to hear about excellent things. Guys, I'm so excited that you're here with us today, and I'm very happy to have my guest, Devin Newman from Canopy. Glad you're here. Of course. We, we've, we've gone through hell and high water to get this episode <laughs> recorded. Devin, go ahead and talk to us just a little bit about Canopy. Give it to us in a nutshell. What sure. Canopy? is and what you do there. Sure. So Canopy is a nonprofit in Northwest Arkansas that resettles refugees. Um, but we also have an entrepreneurship arm that is open to all immigrants in Northwest Arkansas with a business idea. Okay. Wow. So, and your role there is what? I'm the entrepreneurship trainer. So uh, if you want to join the program, we will be meeting a whole bunch. I teach the program and I will help you do everything it takes to get your business started. Yeah. And so you guys are getting ready to take on a new cohort of 250 is that right that is how many uh refugees we will be resettling in the next year our next cohort starts october 10th and there will be 14 businesses in it and 16 entrepreneurs wow have Mm -hmm. those participants already been selected they've already been selected yep so the next cohort is full but if you're interested i do have a wait list and you are welcome to get on there uh, in case somebody drops or for the next cohort. what you guys have going at canopy right now is pretty incredible thank you as a citizen of Northwest Mm -hmm. Arkansas on behalf of the rest of us. Um, Thanks for doing such a great job for for all of us. And uh, we appreciate that. But now getting to where you are today for you has been um, an arduous journey to Mm -hmm. say the least, correct? Uh, Yes, it's been uh, a little bit different than most, a little bit adventurous and um, dramatic. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Now, it it, it just, I got to tell you, bear with us for a second, because Devin, you weren't born in Arkansas, right? No, no. I was born in Texas. She is a bloody Texan, folks. Can <laughs> you believe it? But I'm telling you, I'm telling you that once you get to know Devin and her story a little bit, I'm going to give you some grace because <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, 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 I think if you can get an MBA from the University of Arkansas, uh, then you get to be called an Arkansan. I'm an Arkansan. So there Absolutely. you go. Yeah, <laughs> you've done great things, and uh, and and we'll get to the MBA because it was incredible uh, that part of the story too so growing up in texas Mm -hmm. talk to us about how you get to arkansas and what happens after you get here sure so i I came to arkansas for undergrad like a lot of Texans do, right? It's a little mini University of Texas out here. I can't believe you repeated that. <laughs> oh my gosh, that was a dig. <laughs> yes, um, so yeah, so to let you uh, on the inside of an outside joke, I guess, or something <laughs> like that. She said that in the previous time, and it got under my skin so bad, I almost had to take a walk around the room. Um, but I'm okay now, mm-hmm. because you just said it again, yeah. I'm a little more prepared. It's probably why the last one didn't record. You know, It probably the was no. the desecration of <laughs> yeah. the truth. <laughs> that occurred when you called the University of Arkansas a little, the University of Texas. But yes. anyway, all right, so we're going to, it's still recording, so I guess it's Good. giving you some grace awesome. this time. Yep. Go ahead. So, so you, I, I came here. Um, God's country. And, God's here. country, absolutely. God's country, yes. um, and I got my degree in economics. I was very fortunate to be able to do it quickly in three years. Um, and so I well, had. You worked hard to get your degree in three years. I did. I did. I did full semesters in the summer, so I never took a break. Um, wow. Wow. I was constantly You're like 15 hours, 15 hours every in summer, the summer. Mm-hmm. my yep. word. Yep. You do like a May master, two summer ones and two summer twos. And then that's, that's 15 wow. hours. So it's nonstop. But, um, so I graduated with a couple of hours missing, which you can do. Um, and so the day after graduation, I still got to walk. I went on a study abroad and that's what completed my undergrad. So okay. that's when I left for India was the day okay. after graduation. So India was mm-hmm. the study abroad opportunity. Why mm-hmm. India? I chose India um, because it was really difficult study abroad. You know, when I met with Vikas, who led the trip at the time, um, he's no longer at the University of Arkansas, very sadly, but Mm. um, he just kept harping on how difficult this trip is going to be. It's not a trip for people who want to party. It's going to be up at 5 a.m., visiting places until midnight and and repeat and rinse every day for a month, right? So Mm -hmm. um, that sounded great to me. (laughs) I'm always up for a challenge. 
I want what's going to be difficult. I wanted to go to a country that's culture could not be more different than American culture and really just have that shock um, and that experience. So yeah, one month I did a study abroad, which is where I met my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, And then after that one month, everybody else left except for a couple of people, me and him, and then one other girl. And um, I worked at an orphanage and he worked at Walmart Global Sourcing and we were roommates. Wow. Did he Mm -hmm. have the job with Walmart Global Sourcing before you guys went to India? Yes, we had that all set up before, before we left. So I knew he was going to be my roommate. And actually, he he made that happen, which is also kind well, of funny. That's I can't really blame him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. if, he's, if he's looking for a dating strategy, yeah, oh, that yeah. works pretty well. Yeah, just, just constant contact. Yeah, I mean, right? So it's immersion, right? Yes. I was a school teacher for a long time. And uh, unfortunately, that's the strategy for mm-hmm. teaching immigrant children English, too, is mm. just immersion. Yeah. And, and, and I really... I'll get on my soapbox here, but I think it's a horrible strategy and and we can debate it if you think it's a good one. Mm. But um, I think anyone who is in a structure that they're in, and they're trying to learn, mm-hmm. um, we should put those structures for learning in place and Absolutely. not just sink or swim. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyway, ooh, I got me <laughs> soapbox, a little, yeah. <laughs> little hot under the collar there. I'm telling you. Um, so. All right. So you come to the University of Arkansas, you get your degree, Mm -hmm. turn around within the week, you're leaving Mm -hmm. for India. Yeah. Very next day. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And so talk to us about your work at the orphanage. Um, That was the best time of my life. I would have frozen time and stayed there forever if I could have, because I loved that job. I got to do uh, anything from teaching English and math to um, working with the older ladies, because it was all also a women's refuge. So there were young girls who were rescued from sex trafficking or their parents took them there because they couldn't afford to take care of them anymore. Um, And then there was also a group of old ladies who had issues or maybe their family couldn't take care of them that were also taken in, right? So I could go and cook with them in the kitchen one day, or I could ask if I could go to temple and just have that cultural immersion, or I could work on um, donor things to help them, you know, streamline that and to get more donors in the door, right? So I really got to pick what I wanted to do every that's day. So cool. um, and I got to go to recess every day. Yeah, so that's right. Great. That, that was one thing you said was yes. like, you didn't miss recess. Never. I never right. miss recess. I learned the most amazing game called Ligori. I make everybody play it. We played it at my wedding rehearsal. <laughs> the whole really? Family. Oh yeah, it's so much fun. All you need is a stack of rocks and a ball. That's okay. it. Okay. <laughs> stack of rocks and a ball. And a we ball. may have to demonstrate that one yes, day. Like, absolutely. Cause, uh, uh, I have no doubt that there are some other hosts on Northwest Arkansas Business Radio X that would definitely want to talk to you on their podcast as well. We've got a little cool. network going here. Very I don't, cool. yeah, it's That's very awesome. cool. If, uh, yeah, for those of you that are new to to Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. Um, Yeah, this is just the house show for a network of podcasts. And Uh so we've got uh, all all sorts of different hosts and and interests that people talk about. And so I know people will want to talk to you. (laughs) Um, So I have a feeling I'm going to see you more, uh, especially now that I'm not afraid to text you and say, hey, (laughs) I uh, ruined the audio. Can you come back? And so (laughs) anyway, um, so all right. So you get to India, you Mm -hmm. work at the orphanage, you're um roommate at the mm-hmm. time is working for Walmart. Yep. You guys we fall in love. Fall in love. Oh yeah. It's pretty romantic it when is. you think about falling in love in India. Mm-hmm. I mean, um what was that like? Oh, it was amazing. I mean, every day after work we would just go explore a different part of the city. We would go away on weekends to places like Goa, which has some of the most amazing beaches in the world. Um, our very last weekend there, his last like hoorah to really woo me over. He took me, <laughs> he took me to a place called Udi, um, Udi, which was in the jungle. And we got to stay in these jungle tree houses where, I mean, you were in the jungle. They said, do not leave after dark. You could get trampled by an elephant Is kind of in right? the jungle. Yeah. Wow. And you could hear him walking around. There were monkeys get, up in the trees oh, and stuff. Monkey there were tigers somewhere we didn't get to see them oh but they gosh. were around and and so it was just it was unbelievable right mm-hmm. like this experience of having an amazing job falling in love getting to explore a dynamic country that has an amazing culture and delicious food um and so it was it was the best time yeah, yeah. sounds amazing mm-hmm. so 
you guys get married in India? Oh, no. No. We, um, right after India, we decided we weren't done traveling. Okay. And so we both took off to South America from there. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you didn't come back to the United States Well, we did come back for a short time. Okay. We, you know, we had to see family, um, save up a little bit of money. So for a couple of months, we came back. Okay. And then, um, but we didn't start anything, right? We right. knew we were immediately leaving. So we took off for South America after that on a big, what was supposed to be a seven-month backpacking trip okay. but um ended up only being five months got it mm-hmm. okay wow yeah so seven months mm-hmm. it gets uh interrupted at just five months mm-hmm. um how come so we went to peru bolivia uruguay and argentina and in argentina that is where i learned that i had cancer um so. wow <laughs> yeah. okay yes. um so let's slow down a little bit mm-hmm. um how Okay, so <laughs> you, sorry. How, how do you how, find that yeah. out? Yeah, so how do you find out when you're in South America mm-hmm. on your honeymoon? No, no, no. not honeymoon. Just okay. with your boyfriend at 22. Oh, you weren't even married We yet. weren't even married. Wow. Yeah, he was just my boyfriend. Yes. Wow, mm-hmm. he's a really great guy. Yes, he's wow. a great guy. Okay, I yes. didn't get that part. Yep. So, mm-hmm. okay, so you guys, with your boyfriend, mm-hmm. you, you are in Argentina, correct? Yes. And, and yep. what happened? So, um... Um, you know, I had had some symptoms pop up um, before we even left for South America. And the biggest symptom I had was uncontrollable itchiness. Mm. It felt like I had bugs under my skin just nonstop. And I went to the dermatologist. He looked at my skin and he prescribed me anti-anxiety meds. Wow. And I was like, oh, okay. So it's just in, in my head. head. Yeah. Awesome. Which yeah. is what everybody loves to hear yeah. when you go to the doctor. So, if, well, and if my wife was here, she'd say something like, well, of course, you're just going to throw pills at a woman because she's so <laughs> yes, emotional. Of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and so um, and she's so, going to be proud of me for saying that. Oh, I love God. you, Jenny. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. Ahead. And so we went to South America. And from there, you just find every excuse under the sun, right? You're 22. Right. No, this is nothing serious seriously wrong with you. So, oh, it must have been the water that I'm allergic to, or maybe I'm allergic to Brandon, this new boyfriend, you know, (laughs) I don't know. Um, And so that itchiness just kept getting worse and worse and worse to a point where like, you know, I, I don't want to be too dramatic, but I, I was like, I might throw myself off a cliff if I just really? like, because it was just persistent day and night, just nonstop wow. my whole body to the point where I was, I was scratching myself raw and bleeding and, and then other symptoms started coming up. Right. So we were in Peru and I'm itchy and we go to Bolivia and I'm, I'm itchy. Plus now I have night sweats, right. Which wow. is where I wake up and I am drenched in in sweat and and we're staying in three dollar a night hostels right so i'm like okay maybe it's the bed bugs maybe there's bed bugs Mm -hmm. here and and now i'm drenched in sweat and i'm bleeding because i've been itchy all night so i'm gonna get up to go to the shared bathroom in this three dollar (laughs) hostel wow not exactly the most uh it was horrible no (laughs) um and so it was just it was very stress it was amazing time but it was very stressful in that sense right so Bolivia night sweat start we get to Uruguay and they worsen right so now instead of once a month or like once very infrequent night sweats now it's you know once every other day or so and so we get to Argentina which we go to because there's this mountain there called Mount Orotoco Mm -hmm. um, and there are these lights at the top of the mountain that nobody can explain and this whole town is alien themed they all believe it's aliens so we're like let's go to this mountain you know Um, so we were in this tiny town middle of nowhere Argentina um, and that's why we were there was to hike this mountain but Mm -hmm. I had just started feeling so tired and so sick and I could barely really get out of bed um so we'd been in this town for like three days Mm -hmm. we still hadn't hiked this mountain yet and finally one day brandon like pulls me out he's like bags are packed breakfast is ready today's the day we're hiking this mountain right so we start hiking the mountain we get to the top all's fine i'm itchy i'm exhausted i i had a shower that morning because i was drenched in sweat but other than that everything was fine yeah (laughs) on the way down i tripped and i fell into a thorn bush and I got a massive thorn in my hand that I couldn't remove. Oh my God. It was so big. By the time I got to the bottom of the mountain, my hand had swelled to twice its size. Oh my gosh. Um, Was there some sort of toxin on the thorn? You know, they think maybe 
it was just so big and it was pressing on a blood vessel or something yeah. that the blood was so constricted okay. that it in, enlarged my hand. Yeah. All I cared about was the fact that I had rings on and I could not get them off. And Ooh. I was I was like, I'm going to lose a finger. Yeah. Yeah. Can somebody please? <laughs> please. Yeah. So uh, we finally get down the mountain. We get to a hospital. They pull out the thorn. They give me a steroid shot. Did they give you a pain shot for the no. thorn coming? I mean, did you scream and want to pass you out? Know, it was a big needle they had to use to get that sucker out. But Gosh. but it was free. So beggars can't it be choosers. It was free. <laughs> <laughs> you sound like me talking to my kids now. It it's was free. free. Shut up and deal with it. Yeah. Wow. So the steroid shot actually exacerbated the symptoms, like made them so much worse. So the next day I was like, okay, the hospital's free. I mm-hmm. learned that we're going to go back. And, and that's when I went and they were like, oh, how's your hand? And I was like, oh, it's great. But I have all of these other symptoms. Can you help me? Mm. Um, and they touched my neck one time and backed away from me. Like I had the plague and that's oh. how I learned I had Hodgkin's lymphoma. I had a tumor the size of a mango wow. in my neck and actually it had started around my lungs. So another symptom was I couldn't breathe very well, which I thought was the altitude. Sure. Why wouldn't it be? <laughs> Why wouldn't it be? No, yeah. it's tumors pressing and constricting my lungs. And so oh um, I went... And in a matter of two weeks, I went from hiking mountains in Argentina to my very first chemo appointment and treatment. Holy so smokes. it was it was a whirlwind. <laughs> now, before we go there, there was a very interesting communication dynamic mm-hmm. that occurred at the hospital, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, because the the folks at the hospital they they didn't speak English, did they? No they they spoke very very minimal English. No, not enough to be able to tell me mm-hmm. I had cancer. So my husband or my husband now, my boyfriend then um, actually. Spoke speak Spanish and so they told him and he had to tell me Um, so that was an interesting experience to say the least I I can't imagine the the and I can't remember if I shared this with you or not but in 2018 I went to Tijuana Mm -hmm. and uh, had a gastric sleeve and uh, yeah I dropped like 100 pounds which is great but you know that's that's all it's done right now Mm -hmm. Um, but um it was very, very interesting mm. to be in a medical in a medical context. Like I was in a hospital in, in another Tijuana. Country. Mm. No one spoke English. Mm-hmm. Um, you, I knew that 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 I was being treated with complete kindness, mm-hmm. but I did know what they were saying, right. and and we just kind of had to work it out. Mm. Um, I can't imagine, like, I knew what was going on with me mm-hmm. because I had been coached, talked to, prepared before I went down there. Mm-hmm. You don't know what to do mm. from there, right? So, right. like, uh, do you just decide? Do, do they tell you go home and go find this doctor, or do you guys just come up with a plan yourself? That's a great question. What What do you what do? What do you do? Right. Um, so, I immediately left the hospital that day, and I zoomed my mom. Which, if you've ever had to zoom call your mom and tell her you have cancer, I've and never you're coming had, home. I've never had cancer. Um, I can't even try. I can't even imagine Zoom calling my mom. That would be an adventure. Um, yes. Yeah. Get it all set up, That's right? right. Um, and so I, I told her over Zoom, and it like that was difficult enough. And now it's like, all right, game plan. What are we doing? And part of me wanted to stay in Argentina for treatment because mm-hmm. it was relatively cheap, or if not free. Um, of course, my mom said, "Get your ass on a plane <laughs> today." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, and so yeah. Yeah, I, I hopped on the first flight we could get. I told Brandon to finish the trip. Of course, he told me to shut up, and he was absolutely <laughs> yeah. coming. Um, yeah. And so we. That's something my Jenny would say, by the way. She would be like, You keep going. I don't yeah, want to take this from you. Yourself. Uh, I like Brandon more every time you talk about oh, him. Good. So, I think he's yeah. a great human. Yeah. Um, and so we get back to Texas because um, that's where my mom lives, and we went to the emergency room. Wow. Because I didn't know what to do. And I brought, they had paperwork for me because they did blood work at the hospital and other things. It was all in Spanish. I brought that with me. Mm. And at the emergency room, I said, I just got back from Argentina and they told me I have cancer. Here's all the documents. Will you please help me? (laughs) Wow. (laughs) Yeah. And they, um, they called an oncologist and I actually learned from that oncologist who I think is one of the most amazing humans and absolutely help save my life because they originally wanted to send me home. They were like, send her home. 
and and we'll start the process and he said no let's admit her to the oncology ward um and within four days i was in the hospital for four days they did everything that needed to be done a biopsy lung and heart testing um everything that needed to be done for me to get on my first chemo treatment which Mm -hmm. lots of people that takes them months to accomplish and so i was very fortunate in that turned out i had stage 2b so it wasn't crazy progressed but it was doing enough damage (laughs) going on with so um so that's what we did. We just went to the emergency room because, I don't know, I didn't know what else to do. No, so, I think that's, yeah. you know, um, I think back to when my grandma um, got diagnosed with cancer. It was at an emergency room, mm-hmm. you know. She yeah. went because she'd had a bad stomach ache for a couple wow. of weeks and found out that she had a volleyball-sized tumor on the back of her stomach lining. And so, wow. yeah, and she was like, I'd just been sick. I didn't know mm-hmm. it was cancer. Right. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I, I, I don't I don't know what the norm is, but I know with, with our experiences, they seem yeah. similar. Just go to the hospital. Yeah. yeah. So, all right. So within two weeks, you're mm-hmm. at home uh, doing chemo. Yep. Or I realize chemo is not at home, but right. you're back in the States. Right. Um, you, you're... You've signed up for chemo. Mm-hmm. At this point, most people uh, just kind of put their head down and get ready for a fight with cancer, <laughs> yes, right? Yes, yes. Um, you decided to not only fight cancer, but do what? So, yes, you're you're right. Everybody in my life, my mom, everybody was like, just lay on the couch. Don't worry about anything, yeah. which um, it, my advice to everybody is if you're facing someone who is going through something like that, um, it's very damaging almost to be mm. like stop your life lay on the couch because yeah. it's it's hopeless sounding yeah. right so i had one person in my life vikas who took me to india um who said you know what i think you're going to be fine i think you're going to be fine go ahead and apply for the mba program so while i was going through chemo i worked part-time at barnes and nobles just to keep me going and give me something to do and i love to read um while you had cancer you worked for barnes and noble i did yeah i did and actually a lot of my coworkers didn't even know for the longest time until i lost my hair wow and one of them was like did you get a bad haircut i was like no i have cancer oh (laughs) wow made me laugh a whole bunch whenever (laughs) stuff like that happens it's amazing that you can smile about that kind of thing and my guess is you probably smiled then too didn't you oh yeah I've I've made lots of jokes and you know if you don't laugh you cry and laughter is a great medicine and so that's how I chose to handle it was make a lot of jokes and to smile through it Um, so yeah so I I worked part time at Barnes and Nobles and I studied for the GMAT so I would bring you know my study material with me to chemo wait wait a second because mm -hmm. not all of our listeners are graduate students and so um, (laughs) for those listeners out there that don't know what the GMAT GMAT is Mm -hmm. it's a test for for the for getting your master's in business so if you want to go back to school and get your master's in business you either have to take the GMAT or the GRE just depending on the school so and and you don't sometimes depending on the school sometimes they want a certain score Mm -hmm. Um, I know uh, with Arkansas State and Jonesboro um, they just wanted a score Mm -hmm. on file so you know Um, but uh, so you're studying for the GMAT Mm -hmm. while you're going to chemotherapy yeah and I remember when I went in for the test, I didn't think about the fact that they were going to make me take off my hat. Oh, wow. um, so I never bought a wig because wigs are really expensive. They're yeah. like starting thousand yeah. dollars for a good wig. Um, so I always wrapped my head or wore a hat. And so I had to take off my hat, which is really embarrassing. And I sat down for the test and I ended up scoring well enough to get a full ride scholarship, wow. which felt like I was you know, Charlie and Willy Wonka with a golden ticket. Oh, yeah, golden ticket, (laughs) yes. I'm going to be rich. Look, Grandpa. (laughs) (laughs) It was amazing. So, um, so yeah, that's that's what I did while I went through chemo. And it really gave me something to look forward to, to work towards, to have a lot of hope in and and keep me busy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so what's the status today? Yeah, you know, I so I went to MBA school. I graduated in 2021. Um, did corporate for a little bit. It was soul sucking. Went to keep- <laughs> <laughs> so, no yes. offense, corporate folks. <laughs> no, but I, I, you know what yes, she's talking yes, about. Everybody understands. Yeah, I did about 18 months of corporate as wow, well. Yeah. That's impressive. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> that's impressive. Thank you. I, I might still be doing it had it not been for the pandemic. Like <laughs> oh, really, wow, and so yeah. that's a different podcast. But yeah, um, yeah it. It, you just the days get longer and yeah. longer and you know it's when you've gone through something like 
cancer, it makes it incredibly difficult to focus your energy and time on things that just don't matter. Right. You know, whether the gummy, whether the vitamins are stacked gummy, soft gel, gummy, soft gel, <laughs> or gummy and then soft gel, like, I don't care. Right. I don't care. It doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. And so, so corporate wasn't for me. And that's when I went to Canopy. Um, but I will hit five years remission this spring, which is wow. like considered cured. So it's a really big date. I'm really excited for it. Yeah. Um, we're going to throw a really big party out what on our land. What day is it? March what? It'll be April. April? It'll be like April 16th. Okay. Um, will be five years. We're going to throw a really big party out on the land that's going to be cancer We need themed. to bring our cameras and microphones <laughs> mm-hmm. and be at that event and okay, celebrate it with you. That would be you. cool. I think that would be that incredible. That would be very cool, yeah. Because, uh, I don't know, I just, your story fascinates me. Thank you. Um, in that I, I understand. Uh, my, my dad was terminally ill, so oh, I've I'm walked sorry. next to someone who... Um, always lived with the hope that they would get be- would get married would get another day right yes mm-hmm. always lived with the hope that they would um be cured or mm-hmm. that something would get better but then wrestled with the reality that likelihood maybe not right. and so um that's a tough dynamic mm-hmm. to to wake up and, and to live with every mm-hmm. day and the fact that that you woke up and and i know that you were just stage 2b um yeah. you had cancer yeah and lots of people died yeah, from it <laughs> yeah and, and that's a great mm-hmm. big accomplishment Thank and you. to have the the disposition not only the personal disposition but i think maybe even emotional and spiritual disposition to walk that walk and take those steps Mm -hmm. i think is nothing short of noble and so great job i appreciate it yeah i think the party will kind of represent how i handled cancer right where it's going to be cancer themed we're going to have bald caps and i love um, it there's this one drug that they give you called the red devil so it's a lovely experience um and we're going to do red devil jello shots like it's going to be very fun And, and that's you know how you handle it you make the best and you just gotta keep having fun yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah. so i know we're we're out of time for this episode but Mm. before we go the the last part of the conversation we had was about you and your husband and where Mm -hmm. you are now you guys Mm -hmm. have bought a tiny house out in the middle of 25 acres right Yes, out in west fork yeah and you have some whimsical intentions (laughs) for that land right i remember your word because i was just like wow so tell (laughs) us about what's going on mm-hmm. out at Whimsical Acres or whatever yeah. you've named your place. Yeah, so uh, it's something that I want to spend the rest of my life just building on. And I just want to create something that when you walk onto it, you're like, wow. <laughs> like there's just whimsical wonders everywhere from labyrinths to, um, you, I recently just made a massive eight foot dream catcher out of the old saris I had from India to hang on the side of my house, right? Just things like that, that are out of the ordinary and just create something really beautiful and lasting on the land. Um, I love to garden. Mm. Um, I actually did just start, uh, my own little side business of, um, doing raised beds and gardens for people. So right. it's a wonderful, one time cost and I will come in and, 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 you know, put the raised bed in your yard. I'll plant it for you. Everything's organic. Eventually I would like to be able to grow the starts that I plant for you on my own land. Mm-hmm. So everything's all, you know, in the same cycle, but that's my passion is just growing things and being able to create something beautiful and, and trying to share it with other people. Yeah. Right. So whether you come out to the land or maybe you just want a raised garden bed in your own backyard so that you can have your own fruits and vegetables or herbs or pollinators growing, then, um, hopefully I can help you do that. So. Dude, I'm all about the raised garden beds. Yes. I think they're wonderful. They're amazing. I really do. I think it's the way to go. Mm-hmm. And um, not to mention, I think if I have enough raised garden beds in my backyard, mm-hmm. I might get out of mowing the backyard. <laughs> that's true. And that makes me that's very true. happy. And that's what I named it. So if you go to www.theraisedbedco.com, um, then you can you know leave your information if you're interested or just see more. It's still work in progress, but it's up and it's running. Um, And yeah, raised beds, they're just so, so helpful and easy, right? And there's just a lot of people out there who don't have the time or ability. So I'll do it for you. Wow. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I I think you might get a call from from the Robison house (laughs) because, uh, (laughs) yeah, uh, Jenny and I love that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. We just uh, don't really know how to execute some of it. Now, she's probably listening to this right now saying, don't say I don't know how to do that because (laughs) I do. I'm a big girl. Um, Nevertheless. Anyway. um, Wow. Hey, thanks so much. Mm -hmm. After uh, three hours of radio, we finally did a (laughs) 30 minute podcast. 
podcast yes. and we did it well. Awesome. Um, if someone wants to learn more about you, Canopy, mm-hmm. um, follow you on social media, tell mm-hmm. them the best way they can get a hold of you. Sure. So uh, you can always use the Canopy website, right? CanopyNWA.org. If you want to know anything about Canopy, um, if you're interested in anything about the raised garden beds, it's the raised garden, it's the raised bed co.com. If you're interested in me and my travels and my life, because we still love to travel. We've yeah. been to Iceland. We've been to Columbia all over. Um, I have a TikTok. It's called Newman Travels. My last name, New Man Travels. Um, and you're welcome to, to uh, you know, look from afar. And if you're interested in needing help on your own adventures, that's just a passion project of nice. mine. So you're always welcome to reach out. So any of those avenues, and um, I'm sure a lot of it will be linked in yeah. the show notes. So um, you're welcome to reach out for any Yeah, of those. we'll make sure that they are. Yeah. Um, before Devin leaves today, we'll have her write down all of her social handles so that we <laughs> make sure we tag them awesome. i'll follow you on tiktok if okay. you follow me because we, we we do some really cool clips like yeah. for our podcasting customers we not only post the the full episode but on tiktok we have little 60 to 90 second Perfect. clips that uh, sound really cool, cool and fun so um that'll be a lot of fun Devin, thanks okay. so much for doing Thank this you. um i definitely if, if you're cool with this coming mm-hmm. and celebrating your cancer free day in april yeah. um yeah we'll we'll bring the camera we'll bring the microphones <laughs> and uh and i'm sure april will uh will bring something that, that cool. will be great to drink and so yeah <laughs> okay, you know awesome. something like that so anyway guys thank you so much i hope you were just as inspired by Devin as i was um and uh if you were pass her story on the best thing that we can do uh with this gift that we have the power of story in our hand the best thing we can do is give that gift away it doesn't cost anything um and if you don't believe me when i talk about how important the power of story is Think about how many bad movies you've watched, and you watched the whole thing waiting for it to get better, and it never did. Oh, yeah. Why do you wait that long? Because we love good stories, Mm. right? And this is a great story. A a real survivor who um, has really just told cancer to go and and (laughs) take a walk. I'm going to go get my MBA and become a successful professional woman. And that's freaking awesome. Thank you. So, uh, for Devin, this is Adam Robinson with Northwest Arkansas Business Radio. Guys, we will see you next time.